Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Tattoo Home Wreckers. My name is Callista, and this is Gaia. <laughs> <laughs> here with you or right, to bring you another episode uh this one's a little bit a little special to us it's yeah about, um apprenticing we've been meaning to make this apprenticeship episode for a while and this might be a two-parter uh we will see <laughs> yeah there's a lot to talk about here so we might get through it all in one but it might end up being two and honestly mm-hmm. i imagine we're gonna have some questions after this first episode so we'll yes. probably at least touch on it next episode once we start getting some questions in so let's just dive right in. Um, where to start? What to expect with your apprenticeship? Mm-hmm. What to look for? How to prepare yourself for your apprenticeship? Right. And just like honestly going in as understanding as much as you possibly can. So that way you don't walk into a shop and you say, I want to be an apprentice. Without and knowing that's your, what yeah, you're... That's you your know. first part. Exactly. Yeah. Um, where to start? Uh, I I wanted to touch on what your reasoning behind getting into this industry is. Yeah. That should be our why. Yes. Yeah. The bare bones of uh, why you want to be in this industry and why you want to be a tattoo artist. Um, This is important because we do see a lot of people come into the industry for, I don't want to say the wrong reasons. I'll fucking say it. The wrong reasons. So many people (laughs) want to be tattoo artists because they think it's cool. Mm -hmm. And that is purely it. They think, oh, I'm just going to be able to wear what I want to work. I'll be able to fucking party, drink. I will suddenly be cool. Right. People will look up to me. Yeah. Um, People will respect me because I'm a tattoo artist now. A, B, C. You know, the list goes on Mm -hmm. and on. Um, Your bare bones reasoning should be a passion for art and pursuing art and making it to the next level and also just knowing that tattooing isn't just the party lifestyle or like a party career kind of thing um this is a very serious industry you change people's lives forever with yeah. your tattoos um i want to point out where you said like a passion for art i think there also needs to be a passion for people yeah because i <laughs> i run into a lot of young people who want to get into this industry because they love drawing mm-hmm. but at the end of the day you're a commercial artist so if you don't love people and you don't love working with people, you are going to be fucking miserable. Love that. The, um, when you say commercial artist, uh, break that down a little bit cause for the people who don't know. As in, I don't get to tattoo what I want to tattoo a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Um, it is not on my body. It is on their body for the rest of their lives. So there is always a compromise of, hey, I'm going to still do artistically things that I think will look best and will have longevity. And that's another thing. Like I love drawing small shit, but tattooing small does not translate. Mm -hmm. So understanding that like, just because you love art does not mean it will make good, essentially merchandise. Absolutely. So same as you can love singing in the shower. That doesn't mean you can be a professional singer and that anyone's going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with art is that when you're a commercial artist, you are there to do art. For other people. Yeah. I love that. And the way you get you put paid it. to do that. Yep. And half of our job is so focused on customer service. Oh God, and I yes. think a lot of people forget that along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, so knowing that A, you should have a passion for art and passion for people, knowing that like again, you're changing people's lives. People come yep. to you for a tattoo, but a lot of the times they leave with a good experience and that's mm-hmm. what you want. You know, you want and to touch people. You end up a lot of clients come in because they we have this joke of ink therapy, Mm -hmm. but honestly, for so many people, it really is a therapeutic moment of being able to sit down with somebody and have this captive audience that you can speak to. Yeah. So like that, yeah, the knowing your why and having it come from a genuine place and just asking yourself and being honest, because if you're just doing it, because you're like, oh, I think it's cool. You're either going to end up in that same place that so many artists talk about, which is that when you've been tattooing Mm -hmm. for eight to 10 years that Mm -hmm. you hit this burnout point. And it's if you have a passion for people and for the tattooing side of it, you don't burn out. Mm -hmm. I've been tattooing now for I think 13 years. Yep. I look at you like you'd fucking know. Right. No. Um, <laughs> and I haven't hit this burnout point because I am renewed by my job mm-hmm. because I love people and I love tattooing. I, exactly. And I get it. Um, When you're that like early into thinking about apprenticing, you might not always know your why. Um, Because mm-hmm. when I first like was going into my apprenticeship, it was very much like there was a, a calling to it that I couldn't quite describe. Mm-hmm. I knew I had a passion for art. I didn't yet know that I had a passion for people. 
Um, but I did have a calling. And a lot of the times that calling is, again, really hard to describe. It's just that knowing in yeah. you. Your heart of hearts knows that, like, this is calling to you. Um, so if it's calling to you for the right reasons, uh, just listen to it. And then, yeah. again, yeah, really, really question yourself. So now that we've gotten into, you know, knowing your why, why are you going into this? Yep. We'll, we'll get into the technical side. Yeah, like making sure that you have a diver- diverse portfolio. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking digital. If you only draw on an iPad, fucking put that shit down. No one gives a fuck about it. Because mm-hmm. honestly, drawing on any sort of like device is not going to translate for tattooing. Yep. If you draw on an iPad, you know that it corrects the quality of your lines. Mm-hmm. Well, fun fact, in real life, it doesn't. It's essentially like saying, I learned how to drive in video games and then you get behind the wheel of a car and you're like yep i know i'm a great driver Mm -hmm. like nah boo that's two completely different things so when you're working in your portfolio make sure that you're working with pencils pen paint that you have a wide variety because it will also show a possible mentor that you actually have a love for art yeah and we a lot of the things that people look for we want to see that your hand is able to pull a clean line we Mm want to see that your hand is able to craft a smooth gradient yeah with said like you know pencils paint whatever um but digital art does not do that nope you can make a smooth gradient all day anybody with no training can pull a smooth line and make a smooth gradient on an Mm -hmm. ipad or on a tablet or whatever um yeah so we want just traditionally done art yep on paper paper yes also that being said if you have a portfolio Put it in an actual art portfolio. Mm -hmm. This whole walking into a shop with just loose leaf papers or anything on lined paper Mm -hmm. that I can tell that you did during second period. No, I need you to take it just as seriously as I'm going to take it. Yeah. So I need you to have a professional portfolio and treat it professionally, which means you can pick one up for 15 bucks at Michael's. Yeah. Put all your work in there. They should be organized so they tell a story. So it shouldn't just be haphazardly put in. Mm -hmm. It should have an actual like beginning of like, here you go. This is either like stylistically or it can be subject matter wise. But it should make one beautiful piece that makes me want to continue to turn the page and not be like, great. Okay, so we drew this in second period. This looks like a painting from seven years ago. Like, no, it should be all recent as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, recent work. Um, I get a lot of questions as to like what you should put in your portfolio and honestly besides digital art the answer is everything like yeah. include watercolor include pokemon include realism and yep. you can go across the board but yeah have it be telling a story in cohesive yep. as you can yeah you know? a personal gripe of mine i don't want to see tattoo flash i don't want to see mm-hmm. a traditional rose i don't give a flying fuck about that i want to see that you can actually draw yeah and that you're not just going online and being like hmm I think this is like a tattoo design, so let me do this. Like, mm-hmm. no, give me original ideas. Like, let me see something that I haven't seen before. Personality. Yes. Yeah, I want to see your personality. I want to yeah. see your own twist on take on things. And again, there's only so much you can do, but like, we don't want to see anything, or at least I I wouldn't want to see anything that was like constantly traced. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah, you just want to make it as original and, like, I guess eye-grabbing as possible. And, again, can't stress enough, no digital artwork. No. That's just If that's in there, go ahead and take it out because no one's going to take you seriously with that shit. Mm -hmm. Um, Another thing that we've discussed at just nauseam when it comes to (laughs) apprenticeships is understanding the financial sides of it. Yeah. An apprenticeship is very much like going to college. Mm Mm-hmm. And unless you've got some rich mommy and daddy paying for you, no mm-hmm. one's going to pay for you to go to college. So therefore, you need to make sure that you are set up financially, that you can afford to work for free. Yep. Because even though people get upset, like, I can't tell you how many times clients would be like, wait, she doesn't get paid for her apprenticeship when you were apprenticing? And I'm like, mm-hmm. she's getting a fucking education. I'm get- yeah. She's lucky she is not paying for it. Exactly. I'm learning. And that's my thing is, like, I'm learning a craft to set me up for a career for mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. You know, and again, yeah. I'm yeah, I am lucky that I, I wasn't actually losing money. If anything, it was just a standard. No, you show up and that's it. Yeah. Um, and people are weird about that, too. A lot of people don't like the idea of like unpaid internships and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, this is how it works in the tattoo industry. Yeah. This is this is how it works. If you're not paying someone to teach you, you are working for free. Yeah. Because um, that is how you pay. That's the other thing, too, is that like 
you don't work for free. You mm -hmm. pay for your apprenticeship by helping out at a studio, whether you are an individual artist apprentice like mm -hmm. you were, or if you are a studio apprentice. And those do exist as well, yep. where you will learn from everyone. Ideally, even if you're an individual artist, you've um, built a relationship with the rest of the artists in the studio. So they want to teach you. I can't and stress that, that enough. <laughs> that's on you, boo. Yeah. Like, you shouldn't just be coming into a shop and having never spoken to anyone and being like, hey, I want to be an apprentice. Because that's the same as walking into any business and being like, I want to work here. Mm -hmm. Like, why? Why would I want to hire you? I don't know you. So taking that time to build a relationship with a studio, whether that be like just finding yourself in that like circle of friends with those artists or getting a job mm -hmm. like the studio that we are at with Marked. We changed it earlier this year to make sure that all of our apprenticeships now have to require one year of working our front desk. Yep. So that way we can make sure that that person vibes with the entire shop. And for me specifically, it's because I have a very formatted, like I actually have a structure and a plan to the way I do apprenticeships. Mm -hmm. Which I'm very grateful for because um, that is very unusual mm -hmm. in the in the tattoo world, having an actual format. Um, and of course, they're getting paid for the front desk work, but it is yeah. it is a great filter to get to know them personally, because I think a lot of people forget this as well. Even if you were just mentoring under one person, you should still be building rapport with the rest mm -hmm. of the shop. Um, the way I had to explain it to someone once is um, people should care about you succeeding. If yeah. they don't care that you are going to make it as a tattoo artist or not, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. They are your teammates, you know, and hopeful teammates in the future. They are going to be your coworkers, your mm -hmm. teammates. They're going to help you. And it's up to you to build those relationships. That's mm -hmm. equally as important as building relationships with clients. You know, Absolutely. you want to make sure that you have a good team and you have people in your corner rooting for you. Well, because those artists are going to be when you're first starting out, they're going to be the artists that are feeding you clients. Oh, yeah. you're going to be getting their clients. So they're basically taking food out of their own mouths to feed you. Mm -hmm. So by building that rapport, it's going to help you um, all along the way. So that way, like you said, like they want to help. Mm -hmm. So they won't see it as like, who the fuck is this kid? I'm not giving you shit. I'm not helping you out. Yeah. Instead, they'll be like, fuck, yeah, I, I'm here for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to see you succeed. Yeah. But um, to circle back, yeah, financially, it is really important to self mm -hmm. set yourself up correctly. Um, I understand that a lot of people can't put themselves in that position. I was fortunate enough to have not moved out uh, when I started my apprenticeship. And then I was told, like, no, you should stay at your parents' house mm -hmm. until you finish. And it was one of the smartest things that I've done because I can't imagine, A, I mean, just stressing out about like making rent because I wasn't making money in general, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, so I can't imagine stressing out about making you, rent and, you know, apprenticing. You were still working, though. Oh, yeah, I was still working because, yeah. you know, I still had to, you know, make money to pay for my car and then pay for gas, pay for my phone bill, pay for medical bills, like all of that stuff. So I was still working on the side um, and saving as yeah. well as much as I could. Um, but I was also fortunate enough, like before I started my apprenticeship, I was like working six day work weeks because I really wanted to make sure I had like a good chunk of mm -hmm. money in my savings account, just in case, just in case. Um, so yeah, you don't want to be stressing out about like making rent and also learning how to tap to because it is intense. <laughs> <laughs> this whole process is very intense. Yeah. Um, what's next on our list? Okay. So then from there, it's what to look for. Like, <sighs> Mm -hmm. If you are like, okay, perfect. I know my reason why. I love people. I love art. This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. You have money saved up. You have a solid portfolio. And now you're like, okay, so what do I do from here? Mm -hmm. So that's where we were talking about like building a rapport with a shop, whether that's getting tattoos from them. And that being said, if you don't want the style of tattoos from like a mentor and you're not getting tattoos by them, why the fuck are you asking them to teach you? Mm -hmm. Because... To me, it's one of like the uh, most frustrating things, I'm trying to keep my voice down so I don't yell about this, <laughs> is that I get asked about apprenticeships from people who do not want new school. Mm -hmm. Like they don't want it on their body. They have no interest in it. So why the fuck am I going to teach you if you don't even love the style that like lights me up? Mm -hmm. Like at that point, if you want to be a traditional artist, apprentice underneath a traditional artist. Yes. It's that fucking simple. So find an artist whose work you love that lights you up and then start working towards connecting, having a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Work towards being in the studio and benefiting the shop. Because once again, if you're 
just hanging out and you're being a pain in the ass, they're just going to be like, dude, fuck off. Like, I don't, we get so many people who want to be apprenticeship, like, or want to be apprentices. Yeah. That it's easy to see the ones that are just there because they're like, cool, I just want to be cool. And they just want to hang out for that reason. So actually building a rapport, and I'm not saying you're going to end your apprenticeship and you're going to be like us and you're like, holy fuck, I found my person forever. Mm -hmm. But having someone that like genuinely cares about you and having a studio that you're like, hey, I add stuff to the studio. Mm -hmm. So even if it's like our case of like working the front desk, getting a job there and saying, okay, and not being pushy, not rushing it, but understanding that... This is for the rest of your life. This is the long haul. Yeah. So just go it slow and say, all right, I'm in this for however long it needs to be. If it's a year at the front desk, if it's five years at the front desk. Mm -hmm. That way, when you do start, A, you have that base knowledge of just being in a tattoo studio. Because like you've talked about before, like the Oz effect. Oh, my God. Yes. There is always an Oz effect. Be ready because you get into any industry and it is you see the dirty deep little secrets and the gross insides of an industry and just be prepared that it's not it's never as magical as it seems ever Mm -mm. even though i you know i have my days and i wake up and i'm still in awe that i get to tattoo and i'm like stoked there are still i love saying this half of 50 percent of your dream job is still a goddamn job yep that's just how it is it's never ever you're never ever gonna wake up like that every single day Do I have days like that? Yeah, I do. And I'm super grateful for them. But for the most part, it is waking up and going to work. Yeah, it is still a job. (laughs) Putting your head down and doing the damn work. Um, And gosh, you had you said something about like, you know, wanting to like add to a shop and like getting that style done and stuff like that. Yeah. Figure out your style. Figure out what you want to tattoo. Yeah. um, And chase after an artist that you respect. Mm -hmm. And oh, the not rushing thing. That's where I'm going with this. Um, a big mantra during my apprenticeship was I'll get there when I get there. Mm-hmm. Because one of the most, I think, jarring things about probably apprenticing and just being in the tattoo industry in general is the unknown. I did not know. I never asked for a timeline. I just it was a rough, rough estimate of like, who knows? And, you know, we had we had quite the experience in my apprenticeship because we moved shops quite a quite a bit yeah. um, to no fault of anybody. It just didn't work out. And so we move shops and like every single time I'm like, I don't know, I might be just starting from the beginning every time mm-hmm. we move the shop, because again, you're starting from the beginning with other artists as well yep. and building that rapport. And so the biggest thing is um, this uncertainty is going to prepare you for the rest of your time in this industry if you do so choose to stay in the industry. Yes. Because tattooing, there is so much uncertain, just everything going on. N- Every tattoo is so completely different and that's why it's so important to like be patient with yourself and be steadfast and know like I'll get there when I get there. I'll do what I need to do to make it happen yep. because because even our, our paychecks are uncertain. You can everything. go from making <laughs> two grand in a week, which is baller when you do mm-hmm. to then having a mass cancellation or yep. like me two weeks ago getting COVID and yeah. then just not getting paid for a week. Yeah. You don't get paid for that. Yeah. And then having just a bunch of people cancel their appointments and you go from like, awesome, I'm going to be bank this week to my paycheck is $200. To, uh uh-oh, rent's coming up. Yeah. I did not expect this. So like the the uncertainty, I didn't think about that, but the uncertainty really is like a huge part of our job where it comes to like, you never know how your client's going to be. You don't know how they're going to sit. You don't know how the skin's skin's going to react. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You don't know how much you're going to get paid that week. There there is no guarantee in this. And Mm -hmm. even then, you don't know if the market's going to crash and you're going to go into a recession because when we opened up our studio in South Carolina, we went into a recession the very next year Mm -hmm. and struggled. And I didn't make decent money as a tattoo artist until moving out to Reno. Yeah. And that's because I landed myself in a good shop. Shit, you guys. I I was, I think I was 10 tattoos away from graduating and then we had to shut down for COVID. Yep. And the joke was that I would never graduate. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so, yeah, this uncertainty is, it is frustrating and I get that and I see you and I hear you, but this is preparing you again for your everyday job of tattooing. It is so uncertain. Y'all don't even know. Yeah. (laughs) Speaking of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Also, when looking for your apprenticeship is talking to artists and understanding, like, what their requirements are of Mm -hmm. you. Because, like, every apprenticeship is different. Because, like you said before, most artists 
A, they're not teachers. Very few artists have a background in teaching or like in my case, I have a background in coaching. So that helps me a lot with apprenticeships. Mm -hmm. But and I'm a very like type A structured individual. If you I don't know, somehow magically miss that if this is your very first episode and you're like, she seems so free spirited. (laughs) Um, Everything in my life has lists and rules. And so even with like apprenticing, I had like a curriculum laid out. Mm -hmm. I did not necessarily share that with her because I don't like Uh, I believe in some transparency, but at the same time, when you say, hey, once you get past this task, you move on to this, it tends to breed this, like, need for rushing Mm -hmm. instead of this time of, like, you don't move on to the next step until you are where I believe you should be. Yeah. Until the quality of your work is where I need it to be, and that takes however fucking long it takes. Mm -hmm. But discussing with artists, whether, like, when you're getting tattooed by them, of, like, hey, like, I'm thinking that, like, I might want to get in this industry, and, like, gauging their feel and understanding that most artists do charge for apprenticeships, Mm -hmm. and that's totes normal. But that being said, if they do charge, make sure you have a hard contract, as in you have a lawyer look over this contract. So when you hand them 10 grand, 15 grand, they can't just keep you for one month and then be like, fuck off, you're done, I'm keeping all your money. Well, yeah, at that point, it is like a legal discussion yeah. to be had, um, which is fair, totally mm-hmm. fair. Like, and demand that, you know, yeah. honestly, like, know that, like, you are you are an aspiring apprentice and, like, you still should have, if you're going to be financially, mm-hmm. I guess, obligated to this person, yeah. know that you do deserve that kind of clarity, absolutely, yep. because that is that's a whole other ball mm-hmm. field. Um, I was lucky enough. I didn't. I don't pay for my apprenticeship. I just kind of showed up. I made you pay. <laughs> With working things. out. Work. Oh yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I made you pay by like doing a lot of burpees. You know what? I I chose to do that. It's okay. It's true. I still yeah. I still had an option to opt out. And hey, um, speaking of opting out, if it doesn't work for you, no harm, no foul. Honestly, yeah. I find I respect people a whole lot more when they know that it's time to call it quits. Mm-hmm. When they go, this industry isn't what I thought it was going to be, and this job isn't looking too appealing to me anymore, and I, I'm going to move on. I I totally respect Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. I see a lot of yeah. power and strength in that. So no harm, no foul if it doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, also just get to know. I really can't stress. Get to know your future mentor a little bit. Yeah. Getting tattooed by them is a very popular way yep. to get to know them. Um, although like you're going to be a client at that point, so it is going to be different. You, sh- you can still get a gauge of their character because mm-hmm. you want to make sure that like they're Again, they have a very similar moral compass. They're not going to make you do anything that you don't want to do. Like, mm-hmm. you should trust this person. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think that's huge. Trust. Well, and I think also, like, as a tattoo artist, not bringing up on the very first tattoo that you want to be an apprentice. Yes. Because yeah. that, for me, is a huge red flag. That is the same thing as going on a first date with somebody and them telling you that they are dying to get married and have kids. Mm-hmm. It's like, whoa, 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 back up, bro. I don't know you like that. So getting several, because obviously if you want to mentor under them, you love their work. Mm-hmm. So you'd want to get several of their pieces to say, hey, I love this. Absolutely. And just play the long game. Start working on establishing a rapport with them. Because like you said, you don't know their fucking moral compass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Until you've sat with them for a long ass time, and then you can decide if they even want an apprentice. Because honestly, a lot of, even at our shop, mm-hmm. most of the artists don't want an apprentice. I'm over here like, absolutely, I love teaching. Mm-hmm. It's great. But a lot of artists have vowed to never have apprentices. Yeah. Yeah. Even even after like uh, being tattooing for X amount of years, a lot of people won't do that. And honestly, I also see power in that because... Like you said, not a lot of uh, tattoo artists are teachers or coaches yeah. or anything like that. And there's no harm, no foul in that. I, I mean, I get it. I Teaching people to me it does not come as, like, I shouldn't say as easy because obviously work goes into learning how to teach people. But it is a challenge for me to teach yeah. people. If you don't get it by the second time I've explained it differently, I, I'm moving on. Zero, <laughs> zero, zero compassion. Patience. Yeah, zero compassion, zero patience. I'm like, you know what? Find someone. To, figure it out. Figure it out. <laughs> yeah, not, not make a good tattoo No, mentor. oh my God, are you kidding? <laughs> and I'm hoping that like, you know, your next apprentice, mm-hmm. um, I'll be able to like be a teacher's aide. Yeah. You know, that's fine. I can I can handle that and like get some lessons from that because I know I'm going to learn a lot Man, the second time around. It's I'm so learn good. so much. It's, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's amazing watching those moments where people mm-hmm. were like, you explain something and it clicks and it's, 
honestly, even though it's frustrating when someone doesn't get something, Mm -hmm. like working on trying to figure out how to explain to them, like, how do I get this? Mm -hmm. And then figuring out that explanation that works for them and watching them get it is like one of the best feelings you can ever have. Mm -hmm. And it just, uh, I don't know, it's just awesome to see people like learn and then Mm -hmm. especially with like apprentices that are like hungry for knowledge like seeing that like desire and it reteaches you Mm -hmm. because then you're like fuck I don't I don't know how I blend like I just like pick up a machine and blend and so then like the whole time you have an apprentice you yourself this is that part that's exhausting which is why so many artists don't want to do it is you're also trying to while you're working on clients and trying to have that good rapport with clients the back of your mind's like So how do I blend this out? Like, how am I holding my machine? What colors am I choosing? Why am I choosing them? Because you know that everything you're doing needs to be explained to somebody. So that way you can teach them. Mm -hmm. So it's this whole extra part of your brain that has to be turned on to analyze every single move you're doing Mm -hmm. to make sure that you're doing your very best. But also you can explain how and why you're doing it. Yeah. And then when you don't know why, having to sit with yourself to be like, hey, why the fuck am I doing this? I have no idea. And then sitting with someone else and having that conversation of like, I, I'm going to be honest, I don't know why. Beautiful moments. Like, I don't fucking know. Yeah, it's yeah. magical. It's it, it makes me understand why people want children. When you're like, absolutely, that like teaching something is is truly one of life's like most beautiful experiences. I was about to say, yeah, like you would have made it like a really good mom. <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrible. Oh, my God. That would have ruined my life. Uh, yeah, and I'm not saying, like, that's something you should do. I mean, shit. <laughs> no, I'll figure out. I'm like, hey, no, I'm, in, I'm involved in your life now. I'm like, okay, if you want if you want a kid, fine. But, like, it's going to be, I have to prepare. <laughs> yeah, no. We're good on that one. I think I've aged out of that. <laughs> okay, so we've talked a little bit about, like, well, I guess we've talked a lot about it, mm-hmm. not a little. Um how to gain an apprenticeship. If you have questions, because I'm sure there's lots of people with questions out there. Yeah. Please reach out. Mm-hmm. We will touch back on this topic. Um, but otherwise, I think that's good for today's, for okay. part one of the apprenticeship of like how to gain your apprenticeship. Yep. Remember, be patient. Mm-hmm. And get to know your fucking mentor, y'all. Please get to know them. Because also, if you like what we have, this is what happens when you get to know your mentor. Mm -hmm. When you actually become friends with them. Instead of just using them to fucking learn how to tattoo. Understand that they are a whole ass person. And hopefully, if they're teaching you, it's because they love the industry. And they love what they do. And they want to take that knowledge and pass it on to someone else. So you can really, you already, like you said earlier, you already have the same moral compass. Yep. So you could accidentally just make your best friend somebody you work with. Yeah, which is also very rare. I'm not saying that that's how it's going to always end up. I got, we got really lucky. We did. Yeah. Yeah. Who who knew all you had to do was move across the country to Reno fucking Nevada? <laughs> well, you are by far the best thing that came out of Reno. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. And um, also. It's not saying a lot. Let's oh. be clear. I'm going to fight you. <laughs> I'm going to fight you. Good thing we're leaving. Anyways. <laughs> Um, and circling back again, back to our main point, know your why, know mm-hmm. your reasoning. We can tell when you're not passionate. So don't lie to yourself because yeah. everyone else in the room knows it. Yeah. Everybody can, knows. You can fool us for a minute. And don't get me wrong. I've like talked to people about tattooing and like done that trial period of an apprenticeship. Mm-hmm. And usually after a month or two, you're like, mm, you're not a good fit. Yeah, Because you can tell the people, like, who want it deep down in their soul. And that being said, some people that were like, hey, you're not a good fit is just because, like, that person wasn't a good fit Mm -hmm. with our studio or even, like, with me specifically. Like, I've talked to people to be like, yeah, that's awesome. Like, I'm glad you want a tattoo, but, like, damn, I'm not your fucking mentor. Oh, I'm the, yeah, I'm the same way where I'm like, hey, yeah, we do absolutely need more women and um, people of color in this industry Mm -hmm. and queer people. But, like... I'm not a good teacher, dude. I'm not fucking ready for that shit. Yeah. No, I'm not your person. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no harm, no foul. Don't lie to yourself. And it's okay if you're still figuring it out and still figuring out if you want it. Um, but, yeah, we'll get more 
into yeah we'll go into the nitty-gritty of like how to break down an apprenticeship Mm -hmm. um for artists that want to actually take on apprentices but they don't know where to start we'll also talk about that as well because like i said i have an actual like structured plan of how i do it and a timeline and it worked really well yeah i I made a (laughs) solid artist out of it i can say i can vouch the structure worked (laughs) phenomenally and i'm really happy about it so (laughs) but if you do have any questions on this first episode please reach out i will gladly answer them yeah Thanks so much. Great. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Yep. (laughs) Bye. Bye. (laughs)